you two. I don't know why people talk like that. Hey, today we're going to take a look at the AccuTerm brake lathe. And uh, I realize <laughs> turtip rotors in the automotive world and drums is kind of a little bit of a touchy topic. So uh, the purpose behind this is not necessarily when, why, how, what uh, you should turn a rotor, but more or less how you turn a rotor when somebody asks you to do it. Now I see when you, you know, start reading into it a little bit, maybe too far, uh, there's a lot of different ways that people insist that you chuck up a rotor. So I'm going to show you my way. Uh, if you don't like my way, then just do it somebody else's way. So. Whatever works for you. Uh, rule number one though, is measure your rotor beforehand to make sure that there's enough meat on it. Because I've noticed, you know, a lot of years of doing this, there ain't much left of a lot of these rotors when it's time to put pads on it. So nothing like wasting your time getting the perfect cut and then having to throw it in the recycle bin when you're done because it's too thin. Let's take a look at the machine. All right, so taking a look here, here's what we got. Um, first off, Oh, instructions, which I keep a copy sitting right here. Uh, it shows you <laughs> the right way and the wrong way. So you have your hub, your hubless, and your drum set up. So it just depends on what flavor of rotor is on your vehicle as far as what you want to set up. But rest assured, it gives you a great idea on the sheet with what adapter to use. So, with that being said, speaking of adapters, um, I have plenty that fit the vast majority of rotors. A um, couple words of the wise, the ones with uh, tapers on the end, hopefully you can kind of see that, are for hubbed rotors, like the ones with the wheel bearings in them. Okay, so, uh, like, I'm trying to, like this uh, Mercury sitting next to me, the ones where you or you like like on a trailer where you get you know the wheel bearings and the trailer brakes, you get what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, we have a silencing band up here. We definitely want to make sure that we use that. I got the jumbo sized one, so all that good stuff. Uh, spacers, washers, uh, pretty much can follow the instructions. Uh, I have the cones, and here's a good example. Uh, they are for the hubless rotors, so like the ones that I'm going to do here today. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's a rotor off the front of the vehicle or the back of the vehicle. It just means it doesn't have provision or any, you know, races for wheel bearings or anything like that in it. So if you check out right here, you'll notice that we have a couple of bell clamps. And our setup is really, 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 really similar to the way the wheel balancer works. So we're going to have a bell cup or belt clamp, whatever you want to call it, a spring, and some sort of centering device. So if you have a hub rotor, that would look like such. Read the directions. Um, and then on the outside of it, you are going to have another belt clamp, like such. And you're going to have something to take up some space, like some washers, or maybe possibly even that happens when I go to the ATM too. Uh, anyway, uh, maybe you need a spacer like such and then you're definitely going to need a nut. Now the nut is left hand thread so lefty loosey, excuse me, lefty tidy, righty loosey. And you can see when I tighten this guy down it pinches these two clamps together to securely hold my rotor. So next step is we need a rotor. All right, what we're going to look at now is we're going to clean this uh, face inside here, get all the rust off. And then I'm going to tip the rotor a little bit and I'm going to clean the rust out of the area where the cone. All right, we do that so that Everything seats up real nice. Same on the outside. Just using a 36 grit roll lock. All right, next up, let's see. 
We have a hubless rotor, so we're going to go with a belt clamp, a spring, and then we're going to pick uh, a cone. Found it. It's always in the last place to look. I don't know if you all noticed that. Uh, anyway, uh, then we need the rotor, so obviously this cone fits most of the way through this rotor. So it's, it, it actually fits a lot of different flavors of rotor. So uh, we are not going to cut the drum section of this. This is just the rotor turning tutorial. So we are then going to install said rotor and we need a bell clamp. Now we need something to take up all this extra room. So we'll look around here. That should suffice. And that should suffice. Actually, swap him out. Hopefully you can see what we're doing here. And there we go. get you an enhance on how we set this up and then we'll need to change the cutter head out for discs. <laughs> so to change this cutter head out is actually fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. I'm just going to take the drum cutter off. We will reuse the same hardware for the most part. So he is there. This is going here. Now we want this reasonably this way as best we can and fairly well centered up. I realize that uh, that's not always going to be possible, but uh, I'll show you the adjustment setup here a little bit. You do need a spacer for the disc cutter. And uh, I'll go ahead and get this guy lined up with the disc. Fairly straightforward process. Uh, you got two cranks, uh, one over on this side. It's over here, it might be a little bit out of focus. You'll find it, I assure you. So we're just gonna bring the lathe over. Um, we wanna make sure that our uh, locks are off. I don't think that's one going that direction. It's been a little bit since I used this. I do not use this piece of equipment very often. I really, I really don't get many discs or drums that I can turn. So, all right, the lathe has reached the maximum travel in this direction, and we're still not over quite enough. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, I already got that loose, is we're just gonna move the cutter attachment, just a skosh. Okay, center that up nice. Just kinda eyeball it, and then uh, tighten this guy down. Don't force it. Just a little bit, and then I'm gonna bring the lathe back just a little bit, so. Uh, this handle here, on the other hand, moves the cutter head that way. So the actual cutting is gonna be done on this section of the lathe. Uh, this side over here is more for cutting drums, which we're not gonna do. So let me throw some dye on this rotor, and uh, I think we're ready to cut. Oh yeah, cutter heads look good. Nothing's chipped, everything's in good shape, so I think we're ready to go. Let's make it happen. Here's the power switch. Uh, this way for drum, and that way for rotor. Right here is your feed speed for your tool, which we don't have to drive on yet, so it's actually not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna set it, uh, I'm just gonna set it in the middle for now. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is these locks are loose. We're gonna take what's called a scratch cut, and I'm just gonna do it on the front side of the rotor. So I'm gonna rotate this micrometer, which unlike the Pro Cut, uh, these, each dash is, is in a thousandth of an inch. I'm just gonna bring it up on the front side here, just until it touches the rotor. I can see there's quite a bit of wobble. Okay, you hear the pulse? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna shut the lathe off. Then what we're gonna do is 
So we're going to loosen the nut just a little bit and we're going to spin the rotor about 180 degrees. Okay? And we're going to retighten. And what we're doing is we're just checking to make sure that this is true on the hub. So I'm going to back the lathe up and the camera. Just going to back the cutter head up a tiny little bit and repeat that scratch cut one more time. So what you just saw is I took a scratch cut on the front of the rotor. I didn't dig in all the way because the reason we're turning this is it's obviously got a little warp in it. And then it put a line in that fresh black paint. Okay. Then I loosened the rotor up. I turned it 180 degrees, tightened it back down, and then moved the cutter head back a little bit so I could cut another separate line. And what you just saw is the two lines blinking, pulsing, if you will at the exact same time. That means we have the rotor true and flat and correctly installed on the hub or the flange of the AccuTurn. If they're alternating, that means that it didn't get put on correctly either the first time or the second time. So it's usually a result of ha not having things clean. So maybe double check that. Uh, you should be able to get two you know, or three reproducible uh, scratches blinking in the same spot if you have this rotor installed on the lathe correctly. In this case we do, so we're going to go ahead and take the cut. So what's going to happen now, I'm just going to bring this in until it touches on the front. I'm then going to set, I'm going to hold the outside and just set this micrometer to zero according to this pointer here. What that is, is my zero reference point. So I know how much I'm cutting off this rotor. We're going to bring this guy up. Boy, this rotor's got some major warp action going on in it. Okay, and there it just touched in the back. So I'm going to set that to zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy in without slamming the machine into the hat. This being the hat. Alright. Okay, we're good. And I'm going to take I'm going to take about, the way this looks, I'm going to take about 10 thousandths off on that side. And I'm going to take about, I'd like to take about 10 off on this side. I'm going to see if we can, about as deep as we can go. We're a, we're a little like that. So, so that's going to be a 20 thou cut. which we're set up to take. Basically the micrometers are sitting at 10 and 10, so 10 on each side. Um, I'm gonna put this rubber strap, this big rubber band. I wanna make sure that we kinda stretch it evenly, if we can, over the rotor, so we don't break the band. This one's in pretty bad shape, so hopefully, it, hopefully it's got one more cut left in it. All right, lovely, lovely, lovely. This is the shifter to engage. And this is the control for your feed speed. So I like to cut. We'll just kind of see how this goes. If it's cutting pretty heavy, we'll, uh, we'll slow it down. Noon. Noon to 11 o'clock works fairly well.
I know the comment box is probably blowing up with, hey bro, you shouldn't be wearing gloves, man, while you're using the lathe. You're probably right. Just be careful. Okay, so right now the lathe is at the end of its travel. I have turned it off. We're gonna back up to the beginning spot. Just eyeball that over here. Make sure we're not crashing over there. Oh, we're good. Don't stick your fingers in the lathe. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fine cut. So I'm gonna turn the lathe on and then I'm gonna go about two thousandths more, maybe, maybe three. This cut, the whole face of the rotor, everything turned out just absolutely spanking. So I don't need to take much of a fine cut. I'm gonna reduce my feed speed on that little knob to about nine o'clock. And I'm gonna turn the power on to the lathe. We have not touched these, so it's not cutting. Okay, all right. One thousandth, two thousandths, like two and a half thousandths. I'm gonna leave the locks where they're at. Don't forget this side. One thousandth, two thousandths, two and a half. going to do now is we're going to back this guy away and we're just going to remove this strap carefully without ripping it hopefully next we're going to put a non-directional surface on here with a grinding wheel and we'll be done with it Folks, that is a rotor on your AccuTurn. I like this lathe, it's a good piece of equipment, it's really nice to have. Um, not a very common service, at least not in my neck of the woods uh, here at the high school. So, um, usually my only problem I run into is by the time you get everything trued up and nice, you know, we're a thousandth away from the throwaway and I'm not in good conscience gonna put that back on somebody's car, especially given the price of most of these rotors, so. Uh, with that being said, uh, the two different cuts, uh, the one with the sander at the end, noise reduction. I don't know if it helps. I don't know if it doesn't help. I've always been told, hey, this is what you do. So I just did it because it worked. And then of course the slow cut uh, really puts a nice finish on there. So that's when we took our second pass. So uh, hopefully you liked what we did here. Uh, if you didn't, sorry. There's a lot of different ways that people insist that you turn brake rotors, even though we really don't do that a lot anymore. So um, as always, Thanks for watching. Until next time.